This is a Ryobi WS7211K for kit. It's a promotional deal, Home Depot, late 2012, early 2013. Um, everything, it's a wet tile saw, diamond saw. Everything comes packed in the tub. Decent uh, stainless steel here. It's a little bit of a bear to get everything out and get it together. The cool thing about the kit is they're going to give you some trowels and a sponge that's like in a vacuum pack deal, the knee pads. So it's a nice little complete tiling kit, which isn't bad because a Home Depot floor tile, not very expensive, really durable and versatile for a lot of stuff. Uh, one thing to look out for when you go and unpack this, do not lose this little thing. This is a key for the switch. There's a little safety removal cutout for the switch. If this gets removed, the entire thing stops working. So the idea is, it, you know, like a child-proof deal. I don't, I don't like that feature at all. I'd rather just turn the machine off or unplug it to prevent someone from using it, not uh, have a key or, or something. That, that I don't like. Uh, but we're going to put it all together and see if we can get it going, which I'm sure it'll work, but we're going to be using this off an inverter. So uh, I'll see how the performance goes. Again, it's a Ryobi WS7211 and then the K for this being a promotional kit that came with the extra tools. Okay, so when assembling the, the Ryobi tile saw, you want to unpack your components. I put the little plug tip in right away underneath it, uh, and that stays there. You just push it in and it stays there. Then uh, we have a drain, overflow drain thing that goes in here. That's a press fit. Uh, the instructions say to do that right away. I'm going to hold off on that until we get the blade in. This is the arbor assembly. This is the blade. You'll notice on the arbor assembly there's two pieces that are two different thicknesses. The thicker one, the wider one with this groove on it, is what goes in here up against the motor. You can kind of rotate it until everything slides in. And then it should go in there just, just, just fine. Put it in until it stops. Next will be the blade. And the rotation of the blade as you'll be orienting the saw is, is toward you. There's a little lip here that's part of the water spray guard. There's a, a rotational axis here on the blade. It shows the grain of the blade, although I'm, I'm really not sure how much that matters. Um, and which way the blade is flipped, but we're going to do it according to the pictures. We put that on, make sure everything spins freely. And we put the outer part of the arbor on. You'll see it's just like any other saw arbor. Kind of an interrupted circle that corresponds to some slots on the shaft. Here we can see that it's a reasonably nice tight fit. We'll then put the, uh, the nut on. And it's regular threaded, it's not reverse threaded. Now, I, I gotta set the camera down to do this, but I'm gonna show you. There's no blade stop here. You know, like in a lot of table saws and saws, there's a little button up underneath or some lever that you push or press to lock the blade so you can tighten it down. With this, and it comes with the wrenches, it's a two wrench system. So what we're gonna do is we, we stop the wrench with one and then we turn the other wrench. So. We're, we're going to reverse turn or opposite turn these two wrenches as they fit. One fits on the nut, one fits on the end of the shaft. Um, I guess I can do that kind of one-handed. Although, after I set the camera down, I'm going to do that. Now, one thing personally, I'm going to use both hands on this, that when we do something like this, I, I don't like to make it killer tight. These things tend to tighten up as they run. And... Uh, we, we don't want to go killer tight with those sorts of things. Now that I'm done working with the wrenches there, we'll put this overflow thing in. Make sure that it snaps fully in place or else you're, you're going to end up with the, uh, the system not really. And, and it looks to me like there's, there's nothing that really locks it in place. So you just kind of set that in there. It's a good tight fit. It's got a rubber O-ring, but that's all you get out of that. So I could see in the future these saws kind of leaking at the bottom. Uh, next, we've got a little screwdriver stuff going on for the uh, this little edge guard assembly. 
and uh, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to show it a proper way to set all these up. When I use a lot of these types of saws, I, I don't like to use those little blade guards. They, they prevent me from seeing what's going on. It's just that on these, it also helps to keep you from getting sprayed with the water. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to get the next stage put together. Next, we're going to install a blade guard assembly. It, first, the base for the blade guard assembly gets installed. Slides underneath here, okay? And then before putting the little screws in, which uh, slid into the edge here, but I've got to make absolute certain that the bottom of that base lines up with the blade. If the top doesn't line up with it, we can, we can kind of bend this thing a little bit. But you'll see how that's kind of a little slot in there. And that's to give us a little play, but the bottom of this thing has to be perfectly with the bottom of the blade. So you could maybe use a little straight edge down here to make sure that if there was any variances in the manufacturer, you got to correct for them when you install this. Okay, next we're going to put in the rest of the blade guard assembly. It comes with a little screw and a nut in this, but you have to totally remove them to install this. And you'll see it's a piece of relatively heavy plastic. It's got a split in there. Which which corresponds to this. So we slide it down And there's a bit of give and play to it now on one side of this you're going to notice that little hex shape That hex shape corresponds to this nut it looks like a quarter by 20 I think quarter inch hex nut you're going to slide that through there Get that lined up with that slot get it sunk in all the way now, should be no tools required at this point. This is a thumb screw, which has a metal insert. Now, the Ryobi stuff, sometimes these aren't super heavy duty, but it should work out. Okay, now, the way this thing works, it's a blade guard, right? And a lot of people use a tile saw removing these, but for safety's sake, we, we, we want to try and use it. The other thing is for transport and storage of the saw, the blade really the blade guard helps keep the blade from getting damaged. These diamond blades cost a fair amount of money, and the fact that you get one for free with a saw is kind of a major issue. So we, we also want to avoid damaging that blade by something falling on it or getting stacked on it. The blade guard is pretty good for that. The height is going to be determined by the thickness of the material that you're going to be cutting. So for example, this tile here. The other thing is, there's a little bit of irregularity on the bottoms of these tiles, even when you buy them. Okay, so tile cutting is not the world's super exact science, but we're, we, uh, what, what I do is we, we have to set. We can't just do this all the way down or else it's going to be kind of cocked up too hard and there's not a big range of movement on this. Uh, so, what we do is we, we stick a tile here and then lift up slightly just to give it a little extra range of movement, tighten this down. Um, not going super tight, okay, just 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 a you know a healthy little hand tight because this doesn't really move up and down a lot when you're cutting the way it would on a wood saw blade. There's a little bit of range for moving but you really don't want any interference with your cut when you're doing that. The um, so you, you want to make sure you leave enough of a gap that you, get, you have unrestricted movement. Main purpose of this thing is to, uh, well, one, there's protection on the blade. The other is just to keep you from getting sprayed with water when you're working. And then uh, next we're, we're going to, we're pretty much done inside of here. Just going to make sure this little thing doesn't come off or all your water is going to leak out. And then we're going to... Um, we got to take some pieces off of this, get this stuff out of here, and uh, deal with the next stage on all of this. So the way this works, these little things fold down, right, and kind of lock into some notches. You've got to make sure you're on the notches right when you get that set. But this allows you to do some bevel cutting on your tile, but you realize you can't, you know, unlike a wood cutting saw, you can't do a bevel and a shortness cut. Basically, it just gives you enough range of movement to take a take a little side bevel out of that, or like say you're doing some corner tile or something like that. Um, you know, it's just enough to give you that. I, the thing I don't like, I, I, when I cut tile, I really prefer to use just the factory bevel because of the way the finish works. But sometimes the way a, or a piece of work goes, you're going to be using that. 
Not very often though. So these things fold up. It goes underneath. There's no buttons or screws. You just got to make sure everything kind of mates down in a slot just right. There were some little hooks under there. Make sure it all snaps down. You've got good flatness. And the next stage is we're going to start putting the, uh, the, sliding, the sliding guard and then you've got another angle thing here and some more stuff that will go on. But it's almost all together. So with these things unpackaged, this is, this is part of what you use for making angle cuts. This is your, your edge guard here. It can actually go on either side depending on how you're going to cut your tiles. It can go either way. You get a convenient little measuring graph here. Um, We'll see how accurate it is. The thing I like is you can check it on both ends. So if this gets cocked over a little way, one way or the other way, you're, you don't lose your error. Um, I mean, you don't lose your, your straight edge the way you would on a lot of saws where these things might be a little bit cheap and flexible. You only get a measurement on one side. And then because it's running a taper cut, you, you get things screwed up. With this one, when you do your cutting and measuring, you you can make sure that if you're two inches over here you're two inches over on the graph on the other side that's something to definitely keep an eye open for because this is this is plastic the only part that's metal is back here it comes tightened down all the way so it can get a little frustrating to put on but you loosen up the the hand wheel that gets you in there and then you tighten it uh, again no reason to go killer tight you're just going finger tight to keep things snug and then before doing a final cut, you're going to take a reading on the edge here, take a reading on the edge there, and make sure everything's parallel before you do any cuts. This you're not always going to use, but it will uh, snap on the, the edge there. And then you can set some other angles with that. Let's say if we're doing a, uh, we need to we need to do some diamond cutting where where we're doing diamond shapes or. Or cutting off corners on the tiles to fit some odd shapes. For this job, because we're I'm pretty much just square cutting and I'm, I'm just doing some edge edge stuff. I'm not going to be using this much, so we're going to we're going to pop that off, keep that on the side, and we're fully assembled and ready to go. Real world time. If you watch this video, it would only take a little bit longer than this video to unpack and get everything up and going. So if you or kind of trying to gauge your estimate on doing a job. Assume no more than a half hour for unpacking and set up for the uh, the thing straight out of the box. And then if it's already been assembled and you need to fill it with water and just get a couple other things, you know, figure about a 10 minute setup, no more than that. One of the things about Ryobi tools in general is they're really good about having tool, sto tool stored somewhere on the tool for like whatever tools it is to change blades, whether it's the Allen wrenches or the, or the flat wrenches. These, these kind of fit into a slot here. It's a little bit tight, but it works. And then the, these little hooks are for sewing the power cord. Ryobi's really good for that. The only thing that I'm not finding a stowage spot on a tool for is the, the little angle cutting glide. That's not bad. And it is all plastic, so you know what, in theory, you could just about stuff it in the water. Uh, you could just about put it in the water container if you're really worried about losing it. But don't forget that when you're working on tile, you're going to have some of these other tools out and about. But when you're done for the day, yeah, go ahead and stick that, stick that little thing in, in where the water container is. Just remember to get it out before you uh, start cutting it again or else the blade on the inside might grab it. But we're, we're ready to start cutting now. I'm going to make some measurements on the pieces I need to make, and we'll show the initial cuts here. So not much water goes into this. Remember, we're just filling up to the bottoms of these openings. So that basically gives us, oh, maybe an inch of coverage on that saw blade. Maybe. And then uh, I'm, I'm doing, it's kind of an unusual situation where I'm at right now. It's like, I laid out a board for safety just so that it catches any of the water that might splatter or overflow in that. I, I'm going to say it's maybe a little, some, you know, one liter of water, roughly, goes in there. And, and if, if you're, you know, the difference between high and low is whether or not you're going to pick up some water to uh, cool and lubricate the blade. 
The other thing I notice about these, I, I took the tape off of these as part of the unpacking process, but what happens when this is down is they'll, they'll try to flap down so it can give you a little bit of resistance when you go to lift up the, the, the table thing. And just make sure that everything's in place and we're about ready to cut our first tile. But what I need to do is I need to stop and take some measurements to make sure we're set up right. Okay, so I made my first cut off camera just to make sure everything was going to go right. But um, again, I want to keep the splash guard you know, pretty close to the height of whatever material you're cutting. It keeps the water out of your face, and it, but the water still gets around, just hopefully not as badly. And um, so in removing your guard, it just you're going to be a wet operation, run the risk of stuff getting sprayed in your face, which is usually not fun. Now there's no slider on this table, which means you have to hand push things. So if you're cutting a narrow tile, it can get tricky. But for control, and where I'm trying to get two pieces out of one of these, because this is this is what I'm ending up with, which is uh, oh, I think at right around four inches or four, almost five inches actually, um, out of the one foot tile, I'm going to end up with a waste strip that's you know a narrow waste strip, but I. I don't want to cut up a bunch of tiles and then have these things left over. Now, there's a factory bevel on all of these, and I want to save that for the new pieces, so I want to have the, the rough cuts only on the waste strip. You end up with a waste uh, here, but as you install this on a wall, this is hopefully, if everything goes right, ends up underneath the trim. The problem with trying to cut a bevel on this is that this clay tile that, that uh, finish, the, the glazing, is only on the outside. So we're, we're not going to cut that. That's, that's what we live with. Uh, and it's normal. But if we recut our tiles so we have a, a finished side there. So as far as the saw goes, um, because I'm in an off-grid situation, I'm actually running this on an inverter. Seems to be doing well on a 5,000 watt inverter. Uh, we're going to power up. We wait for it to reach full speed and then begin the cut and do not be aggressive take it slow a little tight coming out so I'm going to check the taper on this thing make sure I'm okay but um, yeah you gotta, you gotta watch out on repetitive cuts I gotta cut a few of these uh, but again we're not talking micrometer stuff here it's it's tile but that's how to use a saw uh, the trick let it warm up let the blade get up to speed especially if you're running it on an inverter uh, go slowly you'll get good clean cuts that way don't don't race with these things, okay? This isn't super high grade, uh, high speed stuff. Tile cutting is is not something to race through. You just end up damaging tile. And that's the Ryobi uh, bargain basement, but good and functional uh, tile cutting saw uh, off of the uh, the promotional kits that they're doing now. And we'll uh, go over more later.